So meet attendance, it's kind of reading through some of these ideas, Grammarly, Bitmoji, Screencastify. Oh, whoa, Ian, that's going way back. Doctopus and Gubrick. That was like pre-Google Classroom fun times. Um, oh, the Duelist extension to do that kind of split screen. I actually don't, so Amy, I actually don't use that because I have kind of a second monitor. Um, but I'd be happy to pull that up and kind of talk about it a bit. Not familiar. Okay. So this is kind of helpful for me to get a sense of where you are. Um, there's a number of extensions and add-ons that we'll cover in this, in the purpose of the workshop. Um, everyone wants to learn about dual lists. Let's see if I can add that into our process here. Give me one second. So here's what I'm thinking. Um, what I want to start with is talking through like, what is the difference between an add-on and extension? Then we'll go in and I'll kind of explore some of my favorite extensions and I'll share them with you and kind of show you the process of using them and what they look like. And the, the challenging thing is here, the things that I might use are not necessarily the things that you're going to absolutely want to use, but I've tried to identify like maybe the most common or popular ones across education that could be super handy. Um, and I'm just going to keep an eye on the chat here. So James, Kim, and Kathleen, you're talking about using breakout rooms. So I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but Google Meet is supposed to have breakout rooms coming as like a native feature in Google Meet. Um, I think the talk is October when breakout rooms will go live in Google Meet. Until then, it's kind of clumsy to make breakout rooms. You can make multiple Google Meets and like give links to individual kids, but it's kind of hard to manage that. So my hope is that Google kind of like fast tracks. The last announcement that they made, they said that it would be October when that popped out. Um, so Jody, the easiest way to student take control of your mouse remotely, that would require a little bit of infrastructure to set up. I'm gonna have to think about that one, Jody, and revisit that a little bit later. So with this, here's what we'll do. I'm gonna jump into um, my slides right now, kind of make sure we're really clear on the difference between an add-on and an extension, especially if you're new to this whole world. Um, and then we will kind of get going and explore a lot of tools from there. So add-ons and extensions, here's the, the big difference to me. An extension is something that runs in the Chrome browser and it just makes your Chrome browser kind of, it increases the capacity or functionality of the Chrome browser. So where are they? They're way up here in the top right-hand corner of your Chrome browser. So you can see I have a handful of extensions that are turned on. So I'll show you how to get extensions if you've never done this, how to manage them. Google recently added a feature where you can almost like turn them on and off really quickly. And the reason why you'd want to know how to do that is all extensions are not created equally and some extensions might not play nicely with other extensions. So if you have a ton of them installed, like I've seen people's browsers where they have like 20 extensions that are actively running and the browser can get bogged down. I've seen things like YouTube videos won't play back or all these odd things start happening in the browser. If that happens to me, I turn my extensions off one by one until I find the one that's causing the problem because that problem kind of goes away and then I might stop using it. But I'll show you how to do all of that. So those appear up here. You get them from the Chrome Web Store if you've never been there before. An add-on is a little bit different. An add-on is something that runs inside of a Google Doc, slides, or sheets, and it increases the capacity of that particular tool. So there's a handful of add-ons that I like to use for Google Slides. There's a few that I use for Google Docs. There's a few that I use for Google Sheets. You will kind of find the ones that you like. The big, the, one of the important ideas here is that the add-ons are usually specific to that tool. So if I have an add-on that I like to use in Google Slides, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's gonna function in Google Docs. So it's important to kind of be aware of that. Let me just let a few more of your colleagues in. We have a bunch of people popping in. Hold on one second. All right, I think we're back. All right, so that's the key difference, understanding them. Now, when it comes to your extensions, you used to have to have like another tool just to manage them, but Google has kind of rectified that recently. And here's a little screenshot to kind of demo what I mean here. 
If you'll notice in the top right hand corner of my browser, if you have the most updated version of Chrome or maybe one or two versions back, you will have a little puzzle piece in your browser right now. That's if you have extensions installed. If you tap on that puzzle piece, it gives you this little quick drop down menu. And what you can do is turn them off. And notice as I'm clicking this little pin, the extensions are going away from my browser. So I might say, I want everything off except for one extension. And let me turn off, um, where's my little top? There you go, I'll scroll down. Maybe I'll turn this one off as well. Right, I go, oh, I want my eyedropper, I want moat, I want um, equatio, and like those are turned on right now, right? So that's where you can manage them. If you're like, oh, I installed it and I'll never use it, no problem. If I, if I know I don't use this anymore, I can go triple dots, remove from Chrome, and that will get rid of it. Or I can go triple dots, manage extensions, and it actually brings me to a page, let me back out, it brings me to a page in my Google Chrome browser that shows every extension that I, that I have, and I can turn it on or off or remove it. What I'll actually do is drop that link in the chat for you, because what you could do is actually go directly to that link that I just put in the chat. That will open up all of your extensions on your browser, and then you can see which ones you'd like to get rid of or which ones you'd like to keep. So with that, I say we get right into it. What I want to do, and so I'm also going to give you my slides, and in all of the slides I'm giving you, there's usually a little video overview of the extension, a big button that says, like, get the extension, and all of these are hyperlinked. So if you click, it will bring you right to the page where you can install that extension. So one of my favorite ones right now, and I'll explain why it's my favorite, is because there's academic research and evidence around the fact that providing really targeted feedback to students is a critical component of remote and online learning. I'm sure you've done this before. A student might turn an assignment in through Google Classroom, like they turn in a doc, they turn in a set of Google Slides, and you type comments in the margin, like you give your feedback in the margin, but there's really interesting ways that you can provide feedback through audio. And Moat is one of those ways. So what Moat is, is a Google Chrome extension that lets you add audio comments in the margin of a Google Doc, slides, sheets, or audio in Google Classroom, right? So this is what it looks like. I have Moat already installed. You can see this little M up in my browser. I've gone through the login process. I logged in with my Google account in the browser that I'm using. So now I'm ready to add audio comments. So if this was, excuse me, a set of student Google Slides, for example, and maybe the student idea was here, student idea was here, and I want to provide some feedback on that. Watch what we can do. I'll tap on that element, right? I'll go to insert comment, because I want to add a comment in the margin. And what's different about this, Second, oh, this is not good. Moat, of course, is not happy with me right now. Of all times when I'd like to demo a tool, when I go to demo it and it goes, oh, I'm not gonna work for you right now. Let's see if we can get this to work one more time. Insert comment. Oh, Moat is failing me. Give me one second. Oh, there it is, it popped back up, okay. I just need a little refresh. See, as I'm inserting my comment, instead of me just typing, so these would be typed comments, right? That's what I can normally do. But with Moat, that little M pops up. And when I click to record, watch what happens here. Hey, Greg, uh, here's some audio feedback that I'm adding to your Google Slides. So notice as the teacher, I only have 30 seconds. That's what the free audio feedback tool allows you to do. I can provide some fairly targeted feedback, encouragement, suggestions within a 30 second period. The free version of Moat, because it's kind of a freemium tool, it, even, it limits the number of audio notes you can add per month, but it's a super powerful tool even for free. So there's my audio note that I've just added. I'm gonna let that process, let that do its thing. Once it's done processing, if I comment, this is what it looks like for the student. They can click play. Hey, Greg, uh, here's some audio feedback. Right, and that's embedded right in their slides or in their document. Now, I just want to be super transparent about this, right? The, let me show you the pricing model here because I want you to understand, like, 
it's a, it's a it's a freemium tool. So the free version of Moat, which is the one that I use, I can listen to and read unlimited notes. I can create unlimited Moat audio recordings. It's a 30 second maximum. So I can make as many as I want, but I just can't make them two, three, four minutes at a time. If this is the greatest tool you've ever seen, and I have nothing to do with them, I get no kickbacks, I just like the product. If you wanted to pay for it, you can do 90 second per audio recording. So I think that tool could be really powerful, a really helpful way um, to provide audio feedback. Now for your students to be able to click to hear you, they would need Moat installed as well. And if they have Moat installed, they can click to play right inside of their slides or document. If they don't have Moat installed, it's not the end of the world. There will be a link provided to them. And if they click on that link, then they're going to be able to open up your audio and play it back. It just won't play natively right inside of Google Slides or Google Docs or Google Sheets. If Moat isn't quite your speed, don't worry about it. There's another extension called Talk and Comment that I like to use. It's it was kind of a precursor to Moat. It's been around for a number of years now. You might notice this little microphone right here in the sidebar. That's the talk and comment extension. So this is a little different. It's audio, but it's audio with a link, not like embedded audio. So watch what this one looks like. I'll tap talk and comment. It's recording me right now. So I'm going to say, hey, Greg, I'm looking at slide five. It looks like you have some interesting evidence. I wonder if you could have a, a better visual to illustrate the point you're trying to make, and you might want to reformat, check your spelling. Like this is all the feedback I might give the student. And when I'm done, I hit the checkbox. It's processing, and that's the link to my audio. So if I copy that link, right, I might paste it in the speaker notes for the student to go, hey, if you'd like to listen, my feedback's in the speaker notes. Or I might make a comment, right? So I'll do insert comment and I might paste my comment right there, right? So now it plays natively. Once that loads, it will play natively right here. Oops, hold on one second. Comment. There we go. It's recording me right now. So I'm going to say, hey, Greg. So the process is a little bit longer. You have to record, get the link, paste the link. But with talk and comment, you don't have that barrier of having to pay for it. So like the workflow of Moat is a little more fast and seamless, but talk and comment, you get kind of like unlimited capacity to record and then you just paste the link and the students can play the link natively right there inside of the, um, inside of the comment. So I'm gonna come back to our group for a second. Let me let a few more people in. All right, so I'm super curious, right? We've jumped into our um, extensions and add-on session, and I'm like an over-the-top fan of audio, especially audio feedback. Have you thought about the idea of providing audio feedback to your students, audio comments on their work? And if you've never thought it before, oh yeah, I'll, let me see. Oh, your admin blocked moat. I'm sorry, I'm just catching up on here. Um, I apologize for that kind of experience, Nicole. No, so Catherine, um, talk and comment might be a better fit. Catherine, the students do not need talk and comment to play it back. They will just click on that play file in the comment section. It will play back immediately. So let me grab the links to everything that I'm giving you so you can kind of jump into these as well as you want. Give me one second. I'm going to give you the link to my slides. So there's the link to my slides. Moat is linked in there. Talk and comment is in there. Oh, that's great. Thanks for testing that out, Nicole. And this is one of the challenge of these tools. Like every school district's a little bit different in, in terms of permissions that they allow. Um, so I'll show you a lot of tools and then ultimately you'd have to kind of get approval by the tech department or make sure that they're going to allow you or the students to use it. So let's keep exploring. Let's stick with the kind of add-ons and hold on one second that we might use. So this one, I, I shared it in session one. I cannot share it enough with the groups that I work with. If you are with me in session one, I apologize. We'll do a kind of a bit of a recap and go through this whole idea again. This one is called Record to Slides, and I cannot explain how valuable it is. This extension lets you record your voice via video directly into your slides. 
You can provide instruction. You can introduce ideas. You can connect with your students via video. Another way to think about using this is to provide video feedback inside of students' Google Slides while they're working. Let me show you what it looks like. Here is the Record to Slides extension, right? It's running right here. So you can see Record to Slides. I've pinned it so it's on in my browser. If I unpin it, it will go away. I'll pin it, it will pop up. I'll unpin Moat, unpin Equatio. We'll get to that one later. Now here's the extension, it's running. If I tap on this little record button right here in my slides, turns on my front facing camera, I'll make it so anyone can see the video. And this will be a quick one. If you were with me earlier, you saw this already. So let's hit record. Hey everyone, this is Greg from EdTech Teacher. And this is a quick example of how you can use record to slides, the Chrome extension, to add video directly into your Google Slides. So this would be an awesome way to explain an idea to students, introduce a task or an activity, even maybe hold up a book and read from the book to your students or read a short passage. Or if you use Google Classroom and you send out assignments as Google Slides, you can open up a set of student Google Slides and provide video feedback with Record to Slides. So I just hit stop over here, so record and stop. Now I'll hit OK, and without me doing anything, this is my favorite part, my hands mm -hmm. are off the keyboard, so that video. We can't see your screen. At all? No, it's not presenting. Oh, geez, it was in present. It pulled down when I jumped back and forth. Let me go back here. I apologize for that. How does it look now? Can you see it OK? Yes. OK, perfect. I might apologize for, my apologies for that. I'll go through the whole process again. This will totally work. I'm in my slides. Here's record the slides at this little blue button. I'm gonna tap on record the slides. It turns on my front facing camera. I'll do a shorter video now. I will hit record. This is a demo of me using record to slides. So I have a little pop-up window right now. I can decide who can see my video. I can record, stop, and hit okay. So I'm gonna hit stop. Then I will hit okay. That video is gonna process. Now here's the video that I made earlier when I was so eloquently not sharing my slides with you. Right, so there's the video that I just made. And there's the video that I also just made, that little shorter version. So the shorter videos obviously load much faster. Longer videos could take approximately the length of the video, maybe a little bit longer. But now imagine my students could come here, click on that video and play it back. And now I'm in their slides, guiding them through a process. This is Greg from EdTech Teacher. And this is a quick example of how you can use Record to Slides, the Chrome extension to add video. Right, so that's a really awesome tool. One of my favorite extensions, hands down, is Record to Slides. So let me get rid of that one. So I'll leave that little model in there for you. So let's stick with the idea of video. This time we'll talk about video. And I know I'm moving really quickly. I want to be able to kind of cover, explore, and talk about all the possible potential for creating with extensions in Google Chrome. So one of my favorite other video tools, and I know this might be one that you've already explored or used before, I might add a little idea or two to help you kind of think about what you might do with this. It's called Screencastify. It's a Google Chrome extension that lets you record the screen of the device that you're working on. So for example, if I had to talk about a map or a poem or a graphic or anything that I wanted to talk about and explain to my students, I can use record to I can use Screencastify. It will record my screen, anything that I do on my screen, as well as any inking that I would like to do, right? So I can ink on the screen as I'm going. And when I'm done, that video automatically backs up to Google Drive. From there, I can post it in Google Classroom. I could add it to Google Slides. I can do anything I want with it. So let me show you what this whole process looks like. And then so once we've covered the kind of audio idea with Chrome extensions, we'll cover the kind of video idea with Chrome extensions. I want to stop and check back in with the group and kind of get your thoughts or ideas or how you might consider implementing these extensions into like your practice with your students. So I'm going to go to the little puzzle piece right now. I'm going to turn on Screencastify. There it is right there. So Screencastify is on. Now you can see in the little screenshot here, that's what you'll see. But Screencastify allows you to record anything you're doing in Google Chrome 
I tend to use this when I'm in a set of Google Slides, right? So when I tap on Screencastify, I like to be in Google Slides so I can click through my ideas. And let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to insert a blank slide. And maybe, for example, I'm making a little screen recording about World War II. So I'll do World War II map Europe. And I'm going to add this map into my slides. I might have a map from my files. I'm just using the Explore tool to pull in the map that I'd like to talk about. So that's the map that I would like to talk about in my slides. What I'd like to do is record myself talking about it so the kids can see the map and see me while I'm making the video. So here's what the process looks like. I'm going to tap on Screencastify. It is going to use my browser tab, just this one tab that I'm in. That's the only thing that's going to be recorded. You can see my microphone is on, and my webcam is going to be on, and I can select whatever webcam I'd like to use. All right, so Screencastify, microphone is on, webcam is on. If I click this little Show More Options feature, I can get a countdown of like three, five, or 10 seconds before I get going. And there's embedded drawing tools, which means I can ink on the slides. So when I hit record, watch what's going to happen here. I'll get a three, two, one. Oh, it's using the wrong camera. Hold on a second here. Let me stop that one. Let me do this one more time. It was using the wrong camera, and I wanted to use my default camera. Give me one second. Let's try this one more time. OK, here we go. So now I get to make my screen recording. So hey, everyone, this is Mr. Kulik. Welcome to our World War II screen recording. It'll be an overview and an introduction to what was going on starting in 1939 in Western Europe. And in this video, we'll just talk about 1939 and 1940. So for all of you, right, my friends in Triton right now, let me show you what's possible here. I can ink on the screen, and these are just built-in inking tools. So I might use the red to talk about a certain side of the war. So notice I can outline Germany and Italy right now. I can ink on the screen. I'll go back to my inking tools. I might pick a different color to talk about some other nations that were involved in this conflict. Go over here, highlight all the screen. So I can ink on the slides as I'm talking. I'll go to my eraser tool and wipe the screen, get rid of all that ink. Another really helpful feature in here in Screencastify, if I point to the if I go to my pointer tool, there's a shadow highlighter. So wherever I put my mouse right now, that's going to give a little spotlight feature on top of that content. So if I need to draw their gaze or their attention to Germany, I need to let them know, like, this is what we're talking about right now. I can't assume they understand that. So I'll go back to my pointer tool, turn off the highlighter, and now everything gets lit up again. Now, one feature of Screencastify a lot of people don't realize, my video isn't locked in the corner. If I need to talk about Germany, I might take my video and drag it up over here and make it a little bit smaller, and drop it right next to Germany because I need to explain that kind of what was going on there. If I need to talk about what was going on in Great Britain, I might pull my video over here. If I want to review some timeline ideas, I might bring my video right next to the timeline. So that's another helpful way when you're making videos. You can drag yourself anywhere in the video that you want when you're using Screencastify. Now, in the bottom left-hand corner, that's where all of my tools are. I'm going to pause my recording right now. This is where I can get my thoughts together, jump to a new slide, figure out what I'd like to say next. And then when I'm ready, I will hit play, right? And I pick my recording right back up where it left off. Now, with Screencastify, you get a five-minute recording maximum. If you pay for it, you can get beyond a five-minute recording. But the reality is you can keep your recordings under five minutes and maybe do part one and part two and part three. So now I'm going to hit pause and stop. A new tab is going to open up. And this is the video that I just created. Right, so there's my video that I just made. And I'll kind of jump ahead so you can see all the inking. There's my highlighter. There's the inking that I had on the screen. 
I paused it, I moved my video around so my kids can see me right where I need them to see me. And the best part of this is this video is automatically backing up to Google Drive right now. So this extension like fundamentally transforms what you're capable of doing in Google Chrome. There is no record button in Google Chrome. You cannot record your screen natively with Google Chrome, but Screencastify allows you to do that, which is just a super powerful application um, for educational purposes. Now what I tend to do, once my video is uploaded to Google Drive, I will tap copy shareable link, and that actually makes my video open to anyone who wants to view the video. If you're a Google Classroom user, once this video uploads, I can cross post directly to Google Classroom if I want to. If I don't want to cross post it now, don't worry about it. It's going over to Google Drive. I can post it later if I want to. So now that's uploaded to Google Drive. Like that's backed up and stored. I'm gonna click copy shareable link because I want that video to kind of open up to anyone who might view it. I'll go back to my slides now. I'm actually gonna get rid of the map. I don't need the map there. I want the video there instead. So I'll do insert video from Google Drive recent. Now Google had an outage yesterday. Oh, it's back, good. So there's the video I just made, right? 10, 13 a.m., it automatically saved to Google Slides, Google Drive. I will hit insert. And there's my video that I just created. And that's my little kind of four minute intro to 1939 World War II in Western Europe. And my kids can watch it right here. So with that, I'm gonna stop my screen sharing, come back to the group for a minute and see what everyone's thinking. So we've talked about um, moat, and I understand moat was blocked, but we have another option for moat, which is um, the, audio, the, uh, the other audio extension that we can use. We've talked about record the slides, which I think is like beyond powerful. And then the last one that we talked about was Screencastify. So let me check in on some comments. Does it always show your pick or can it be used as a voiceover? So Nicole, you, you, Nicole do you mean having your front facing video in the corner? Is that what you mean? And you can let me know in the chat. Yeah, so Nicole, you can turn that on or off. There's a little switch in Screencastify to go use my front facing video or turn off. I will suggest to leave it on. There's, this might sound ridiculous, there's academic research around the idea that if you are in the video in the corner, your students will watch it longer and stay more engaged with the process. And the way this research played out was they put cartoon avatars or robots or the actual instructor or some person from YouTube in the corner, and students watch the video of their instructor longer than any other video. So while it feels ridiculously uncomfortable, and no one likes their voice, and no one likes to see themselves in the corner, I think it could be really helpful, but I'm not implying you have to, just that you might want to consider it. Um, so Douglas's question, when you record the slides, can you be presenting your screen? Douglas, you mean so you don't have like the sidebar and the preview slides and the editor across the top? Is that what you're wondering, Doug? Let me know in the chat if that's the case. And the answer is yes, right? So Douglas's question. So oftentimes when I'm in Google Slides, I'll hit record with Screencastify. As it's counting down three, two, one, I'll go into present mode. So slides goes nice and big and I don't have that kind of sidebar with all my preview slides on the left. So you can absolutely do that. Um, let's see. All right, I think we're good. So I'm super curious. Like, I know it's a big group. There's 143 people and you might not want to unlock your microphone, but I'm really wondering, maybe even with some friends who are with me in session one who are now like familiar looking faces, do you have any thoughts or ideas on how you might use any one of these four tools? Like how might a Google Chrome extension that lets you use audio be helpful in your practice? Or how might record the slides or Screencastify, especially if you're new to them and you're thinking, okay, I can record my screen and teach and explain and instruct on top of any idea that I want and I can put that video in Google Classroom, save that video in Google Drive, even put it into a set of Google Slides with Screencastify, or even record the slides. How might front-facing video of you 
be really helpful inside of a set of Google Slides if your kids are at home working kind of independently in this remote plan. So we're halfway into the session. I'm really curious to know what you think right now before we keep moving forward. So Heather, I teach art. You nice to be able to record little bits of demonstration, break things down. Heather, I totally agree with you. That would be an awesome approach, um, especially if you can kind of hold up the piece and talk about it and demonstrate something. Or if you want to do a screen recording, that would work really well. Also, Shauna, reading text for students who can't access the text. Shauna, do you mean like um, their language acquisition or their English language learners, and we might need to support them and kind of like engage in with the text? Is that the idea, Shauna? I see you nodding. Yes, perfect. Reading disabilities, that makes a ton of sense. So with that, Shauna, that actually leads us into the next extension. And I can see you in front of me, one of the few people I can see. Have you used Read Write or Read and Write ever? Have you heard of this? Oh, this is going to be awesome for everyone. So Read Write is our next extension. It's made by this phenomenal company called Text Help. And what Read Write lets you do is click Play, and it reads back any text that's on the screen. It works on the web, it works in Google Docs, it works in Google Slides, and I'll demonstrate it for you right now. The free version of Read Write, they pull away all the fancy features, and it basically lets you hit play, pause, and stop. And I'll show you what this is going to look like. I'll do a live demo. So let me get back to my screen share. This could be amazing for students that need support when they're at home because they can have the text read along to them if the text is a barrier, right? So let's just jump right down to read write because it's so powerful. Hold on, let me let one of your friends into the call. Okay, back to our add-ons and extensions. So read write. Here's the tool. I'm just going to go to the website so you can see what it looks like. Hold on a second. Read and write Chrome. To grab the link to this one. I'm going to drop the link to this right in the chat because I think it's so valuable and so powerful. There's Read Write. So, this Chrome extension, like I said, it will read Google Docs, it will read Google Slides, it will read the web back to you. It reads whatever you want read back to you. Let me just add the link. I did not add the link in my slides, and I want to make sure you have the link to this. There's Read Write. Let's read right. All right. So here's what it that's not what I wanted to do. That looks terrible. Hold on one second. All right, there we go. All right, so read right. Here's what it looks like. I'm going to open up a Google document right now because that's the environment where we most likely would use this. Uh, let's do guide. All right, so this document, for example, imagine if I'm a student and I have these directions and this assignment and I really need this read back to me. So what I'm going to do is go to my extensions, turn on read write. Right here, it's this little purple puzzle piece. I'm going to pin that to turn it on. Now, when I tap on read write, I'm going to get a drop down menu. And notice we have a play, pause, and stop. You can even get into the settings or the options for read write. And you can even customize the voice that's reading back to you. You can customize the speed if you want it to continue, continuously read or speak each word that you kind of select. So you have a lot of control over here. So watch what I'll do. I'm going to highlight this paragraph because that's what I want read back to me, and I will click play. Google Assignments brings together the capabilities of G Suite tools and Canvas for assigning, collecting, and grading student work. It helps save you time with streamlined assignments. Now, if I'm thinking, I really want that to be a little bit faster. Let me just let one of your friends in. I really want that to be a little bit faster. No problem. I will go to Read Write, go triple dots, get into the settings of Read Write, and I'll just speed this up a little bit because I want the speed to be a little bit faster. I might say I even want a different voice on here. Like I might not enjoy that particular voice for my own preferences. Might do US. UK Daniel, let's have that. Now I'll have the next passage read back to me. You can easily use assignments LTI through Canvas. This allows you to maximize the benefits of Google Drive and Canvas workflows combined. 
There we go. So again, this will work on the web. So if you have a web-based article that you want your kids to read, like something on uh, a student-friendly website, maybe Newzella or something like that, if you use these tools, ReadWrite will be an awesome feature. You do not need the premium features to use it. I've seen you know, premium schools or schools that buy it, there's inking tools and there's highlighting tools. The reality is the value is right here, just in play, pause, and stop to have anything read back to you. Now, ReadWrite makes another Chrome extension, and I know this is a request of lots of math teacher, teachers. This Chrome extension is called Equatio. What Equatio allows you do, to do is write in math type inside of Google Slides, Google Docs, or even Google Forms. So here's the extension Equatio, and it's made by the same developers, ReadWrite, who's like a really well-respected um, developer of Google Chrome tools. Um, let's see that question there. Erica, does it work with PDFs? I've never tried it. Let me try something though. Um, I'll open a PDF, Erica. This is one I was working with yesterday. My recollection is no, but let's see what happens. It looks like it's having a hard time reading this. It might be because the PDF is flattened and protected though. Like I know this is a protected PDF. Um, I don't think it does. If I recall, I, it works on the web. It works on docs and slides. I don't think it'll read back a PDF. Sorry about that. With that idea, I want to keep going here. So Equatio is a math editor that works for Google. And I know this is not for everyone. This is like a really specific subset of teachers. But let me show you what this will do. I have Equatio installed. I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to turn off read write and turn off screencastify for a second so there's equatio when i tap on that notice what happens on the bottom of my screen i get this little pop-up and it gives me every different way that i might want to add math into my slides my doc or my form so i'd like to do some handwriting i can literally handwrite out an equation in this space so i'll do three x plus five equals 14. So it's snapping my handwriting to math type. And then when I'm ready, all I have to do is insert math. And it's going to take that right there. I have to wait for it to do its thing. Hopefully it's happy and, and kind of agreeable to what I'd like to do right now. And it will take that math and dump it onto the slides for me. If it doesn't, uh, Equatio could be unhappy with me in the moment. But I'll show you in another environment, how that works. Hold on one second. Let's try this one more time. Oh, it's super unhappy with me. Hold on. Let me try one more time. I want you to see this process. Let's insert that text box and try it one more time. So 3x plus 5 equals 14. I will do insert math. And Equatio is failing me. I promise, friends, this will work. This is a way that you can put math type into Google Slides, Docs, or Sheets. Not super convenient that it's failing me in the moment. Um, I do want to point out one thing, Equatio uh, free for teachers. You can actually get the free version of Equatio. Um, you just need to fill out a little form and request the free upgrade. I'm just getting the link for you right now. Here's the link. So I'm going to put this in the chat for you. So if you think Equatio is awesome, thanks, Eric. I appreciate that. If you think if you think Equatio is awesome, there's a link um, to the a, a free website from Text Help that lets you do a free teacher request, and you can upgrade the free version of Equatio forever. And it lets you do voice to math, writing to math. You can even, if you're feeling adventurous, you can actually even connect your phone, and this can become a little tablet that you can write on, and then your math type pops right up in your doc slides or form immediately. So I know that's really specific, but it could be super helpful. So um, one last extension that I want to show you that I used a ton when I was a history teacher is print friendly. So what print friendly allows you to do is find anything that's on the web, clean it up instantly, and turn it into a downloadable PDF that you can save forever. And let me, let me show you what I mean. So I remember when this article came out, um, 
So this is what it looks like on the globe, like the Boston Globe. And this is even an archived version. So like the formatting is pretty bad. It's not a great reading experience. I might think like, oh, I really want this, but I want it as a really clean looking PDF, not this like kind of clunky looking website uh, from a Boston Globe archive. So let me just jump back there. So here's what I can do. I mean, I could absolutely take this and copy the text out of it and paste it if I wanted to. You're not yeah, sharing your, your screen. screen. Sorry, sorry, my apologies. Let me jump back. I'm gonna push my screen. Thanks for stopping me though. I've gone like 10 minutes without anyone telling me. All right, there we go. Now you'll see my screen. So here's the article on the Boston Globe, right? Why might I want to convert this? I can clean it up. I can make an archive of it that I can have forever and I don't have to worry about the globe pulling this from their website. So the extension that I'm going to use is, hold on one second, let me pop it open and show you. It's called Print Friendly. So here's Print Friendly. I'll drop the link in the chat. I'm going to add the Chrome extension and I'll give you this link right now so you can get access to it. Oh, this is interesting. It's not showing up for me. Hold, oh, there it is. Hold on. Let me just turn this on. There we go. Now it's back. So I'm going to add print friendly into the chat for you so you can get access to this, whatever you want. Hold on one second. There's print friendly. All right. So here's the extension. It should now be available in Chrome for me. There's print friendly, let's turn that on. So it's this little green printer icon. So this is what it looked like first, kind of a messy looking outdated website with way too much extra junk on it. I'll tap on print friendly. It's taking that website that was kind of a mess from my perspective and it cleans it up and makes it look like this. Now, here's what I also have to do, and I love this. This is what I did as a history teacher. If I had a really kind of long, dense article that was maybe a bit beyond the capacity of my freshman, or I'm thinking, we don't need to read the whole thing, I want excerpts, any paragraph or segment that you tap on here, you can make it go away, and it just pulls from it, right? So if I don't even want that image, I'll tap, the image goes away. If I don't want this passage, I'll tap, the passage goes away. I might pull this one, tap, it goes away. So when I'm totally done, so now this is a really cleaned up version. If I tap PDF, wait for this to process, I'll download my PDF and here's what it looks like now. And the benefit to this is now I own this forever. I'll download that, save that in my Google Drive files as a reading in my US history class. So like, like I said, this page here could go away, they could pull it, and it's just maybe not as accessible as having that nice printable PDF or the PDF I can post to Google Classroom and let my kids have this kind of really clean reading environment where I can customize the experience and decide what's going to be in and what's going to be out. So that's another Chrome extension that I'm a huge fan of. So I've given you some, I've tried to really pick ones that would allow for some creativity with regards to your teaching with audio and video, one with regards to Oh, you're blocked from print friendly. Oh, yikes. Um, maybe we, I'll check in. I'll follow up and say, hey, here's the tools that I've used and exposed them to. Maybe we can look into um, allowing them to be open. There's another one. Hold on. Maybe this one will work as well. Mercury Reader Chrome. Print friendly is not the other one. We can use Mercury Reader. Let me see if you have access to Mercury Reader. It's really the same thing, um, just a different tool. So I'll show you Mercury Reader right now. Let me do a screen share so you can see it. Just one second. All right. So Mercury Reader is really similar. It cleans up anything that you're looking at on the web. So I've just installed Mercury Reader. I'm just going to turn it on. Hold on one second. Mercury Reader is on. Let's go to an article on the web. Where did it go? This is interesting. Let's see if it'll let me use it. It might not let me use it on this one. Oh, there's Mercury Reader, it popped up. So Mercury Reader is really similar. So if I, t that's a similar extension to record the slides, maybe that one works. If I tap on Mercury Reader, notice this is what the website looks like now. So it looks like, hold on a second. It looked like this. 
right? Yeah, it's okay looking. I'll tap on Mercury Reader and it cleans it up and makes it look like this immediately. So from here, I could print this page, I can download and notice I can even customize what the reading experience looks like. So this could be really helpful for students, but what I can do right now is take all of this text if I want to, I might highlight all of that text and maybe even then drop it into a Google document, which would allow my students to read it effectively. Or I can turn on Mercury Reader and then maybe even layer this with um, uh, Read Write. And then it's just a really clean reading environment for my students on the web. So you might want to check into that one. Hopefully that's accessible to you as well um, of using Mercury Reader. Um, Susan, how does this connect with intellectual property laws? Modifying articles is usually about the bounds, isn't it? Um, I'll show you the capacity of the tool, Susan. I will not claim to be a fair right um, use expert. Like I've gotten, I will totally admit, I got a wonderful cease and desist letter from a textbook publisher because I had a PDF on my history website when I was teaching in Plymouth. So use them with caution. I think my, at least my perspective was and my understanding is like, if I find an article that's already publicly on the web and I might modify it to a degree and then share it privately through something like my learning management system or Google Classroom, like I was comfortable doing that, I would never take that PDF and republish it online or share it publicly. Um, but obviously check with your tech department, check, make sure that you're following any kind of fair use that's been established within your district or any way that kind of fair use is being interpreted because it's interpreted differently everywhere. I'll show you the capacity. You can decide whether you're comfortable using the tool or not. So what I'd like to do is we have about 10 minutes or so. Let me just jump over to the idea of Google Chrome, add, excuse me, Google add-ons, which are a little bit different, right? So add-ons run specifically inside of docs, slides, or sheets. The add-ons whole library is too extensive for me to even begin to explore it with you. What I want to show you is how do you find add-ons, and then I'll share some of my favorites. In Google Slides, in Google Docs, in Google Sheets, you'll see this little add-ons button. Now, if I tap on that, you will see the ability to open up add-ons you've already installed, or you can get add-ons from the add-ons marketplace, or you can manage ones that you already have. So if I go to get add-ons, just to show you what this will look like, I'll get a pop-up box. Okay, the screen is tiny. And now with the pop-up box, I'm able to kind of scroll through and find some popular add-ons. Now this world of the add-ons is extensive and there's probably 99% of these you would never use. So let me show you some of the ones that I like to use um, and then maybe have you explore and consider on your own. Yeah. One of my favorite tools is Slides Toolbox. I use Google Slides all the time. I like to have increased functionality in my Google Slides. So I have already installed Slides Toolbox. Because I've already installed it, there it is. I'm going to open Slides Toolbox. And almost every add-on runs in the sidebar, right? So it runs next to the tool that you're using. So you have all sorts of options in Slides Toolbox. I can remove specific things that I want across all of my slides, right? So if I want to remove all the images, I can do that in one click. If I want to remove all videos, I can remove them in one click. If I want to remove any blank text boxes, I can remove them all. So it's a way to like do this big global editing of your slides really quickly and easily. There are text tools built in here which allows you to modify everything at once across all of your slides by center aligning, vertically aligning, left aligning. You can decide what your hyperlinks will look like. You can decide what your what's gonna be bolded or not bolded. So if you're more of like an advanced Google Slides user, this tool could be really helpful. My favorite one here is my ability to export all of my slides at once as an image file. Right, so oftentimes I want to pull my slides out and then do other work with them so I can in export all the slides as an image. There's another really helpful import function as well. You can upload, so say you have a file with like 10 images in them. You can click create slides from images and it makes a unique slide for each image in that folder of images that you've uploaded. 
So I've worked with teachers where they're like, I have all these great photos from class, or I have all these screenshots from a reading or something that I've kind of pulled out of a PDF or screenshots I've pulled from old files that I have. And they have to tediously go through, make a new slide, insert the image, make a new slide, insert the image. And Slides Toolbox just automates that for you. It goes, give us all of your images and we will drop them in one by one on unique slides for you. So that can be really helpful also. So there's a whole other, there's a whole host of features, but Slides Toolbox is one of my favorites. Another one of my favorites for creating slides that like look really nice is there is an icon or a flat icon Google Chrome or Google Slides add-on. I love using this one. I've already have it installed. I'll go to my add-ons tool. I'm opening up icons for Google Slides and I'll hit start. And notice it's just gonna run in the sidebar. These are all generic icons. If I need any sort of visual that I'd like to add, I can search for it. So if I need earth, I'll search the word earth. And now anything that doesn't have a star, I can just tap and it adds right in for free. So if I like this one, I'll tap on that one. It lets me even pick the color scheme. So I might want it to be blue instead. Maybe I want that to be green. I can pick the size of that, like 128 is decent size. Pixels, I'll leave it on 128, hit insert, let it do its thing. And these are all copyright free kind of images that I can drop in. So if I wanted that nice little earth icon there, I dropped it in instantly, right? I will do, let's do ocean. Right, so I might want this ocean icon or this one right here. And again, just pick the ones without the little star next to it. So I want that icon, I want it to be blue. I will tap insert, let this drop on, just shrink that down a little bit and then drop it here, just copy and paste, drop it here, copy and paste. So like you can make visuals really quickly and easily using the flat icon Chrome extent, uh, Google Slides add-on. And in the slides that I've handed off to you, everything is linked right here with these little clickable buttons. You can click and it opens up the link to get that add-on or that extension. Now there's one other add-on that I'm a huge fan of, but it's a much bigger process to think about. I wonder if, if you could let me know in the chat, I'm gonna come back to the group here. Have you heard of, or have you used anything like um, Nearpod before? Have you heard of Nearpod? Have you used Nearpod? Does this ring a bell? Heard of it, but haven't used it. So some yes, some no. Heard of it, yes, no. So if you've never used it, this might be a bit much for me to introduce in like four or five minutes. Oh, yikes, a lot of things are blocked. So we're doing an add-on in an extension session, but everything is blocked. I'll do a follow-up with um, Anna and I'll do a follow-up afterwards to say, hey, here's the slides I used, here's all the stuff I introduced. Oftentimes schools might want to go through a vetting process, but ultimately when they're vet, when they're vetted, hopefully they can either install or give you access to them. So the add-on that I'd like to share right now is a, um, hold on entire screen. No problem, Joseph. Oh, perfect. So maybe we can get those tickets put in. The add-on is a Nearpod add-on. So what, it's, what this allows you to do is take your existing Google Slides and make them more of like um, an interactive experience where you can embed questions inside of your Google Slides. If you've never used Nearpod before, this might seem like a bit much in terms of the pacing and the time that I'm gonna spend on it. But what, let's check out what's possible really quickly. I'm gonna open the add-ons menu and open Nearpod. It will open in the sidebar. What Nearpod will let me do now is decide at any point if I would like to add in for example, let me scroll down, an open-ended question, a poll question, or even a drawing activity. So in the case that your kids are home and working remotely, here's what you're able to do. Let me open up a new set of slides really quickly. I'm gonna demo using this here. So I'll do Nearpod demo. I'm gonna open up my add-ons menu. Let's run Nearpod. So add-ons, Nearpod, and I might say, for example, okay, my students are working remotely, 
And I would like them to engage with this kind of activity that I have, and I'm going to build in a poll question. All right, so which extension is your favorite? Record the slides. Moat add answer. Um, and Castify. And friendly. All right, so I'm going to save that. That multiple choice kind of poll question is now getting added to my Google Slides as its own standalone slide. I'll add another one. I might do an open ended question. How may you integrate the extensions that we explored this morning? I'll save that one. Now, how does this actually function? Like, I'm showing you how to add questions, but how does this work? In the bottom right, when I'm done adding all of my interactive experiences, and these can be questions that are kind of in between your old slides. So I might have a map or a little idea that I'll teach or some ideas that I'm going to kind of direct and instruct through Google Meet, for example, or through Zoom. But I want my kids to be able to respond. So if I tap Save and go to Nearpod, and I know I'm doing this really quickly, you definitely want to spend some time following up on this if it seems interesting to you. It's taking my slides and making them an interactive experience right now. Once this is done, you can see it's saving my slides right now. If I go live participation, it will give me a link. And if I give all of you that link, you can answer my questions. I can see exactly how you're replying in real time. So if I were to go copy link and copy the link to those that Nearpod activity, I'll come back to our Google Meet where you might have your kids engage in experience. Oh, Catherine, that's great. If you all were to click on that link in the chat right now, uh, you can stay in the, in the Google Meet. A new tab is going to open up, and then you're going to be looking at my Google um, slides that are now a Nearpod experience. So I can see that none of you have clicked on the link yet. Like I have no students in the room. And you don't have to click on the link. But if you were to click on that link, so two of you are in the room right now. I can see that. Two students went live. Oh, now we have a bunch more. Now we have like seven or eight students. So if I now, and let me show you what my screen looks like. And this will be the last idea we explore today. If you're not going to role play the student, please don't worry about it. I'll show you what I get to do as a teacher. If I get my kids into Google Meet, and I say, hey, everyone, click on the link that I put in the chat. A new tab opens up. They're now in my Nearpod experience. If I click forward, I can see Jill, Doug, Catherine, Kathleen, Sarah, Andrea, Erica. You should have on their screen, they're seeing a multiple choice question of which extension is your favorite. On my screen, when they start voting, I'm going to see how all of those students in my class vote in real time. Now, if you were doing this live, you obviously wouldn't share your screen so the kids can see the results. But it's an awesome way, especially remotely, to kind of provide some instructional content and then embed a question or two. Provide more instructional content, embed another question. So I can see right now that a lot of people are picking Screencastify. A lot of people are picking Record the Slides. right? So that tends to be the interesting one for all of you. I'm going to advance to the next slide. Sorry if you didn't finish voting. All of my students have an open-ended question right now. Now, in the interest of time, I want to respect your time. I'm going to stop that there, come back to our call together. But my hope is that with this hour that we've spent together, you have a little more of, yeah, you have a little more of an awareness of like, what is the whole concept around Google Chrome extensions? What are some extensions I might consider exploring? We obviously can't get to every possible extension and add on in an hour. Even if you're just aware of like, oh, there's things I can do in Google Slides with add-ons I didn't know I could do before. Or there's things I can do in the Chrome browser that I didn't realize I can do before. That can be kind of the big part target of the day. So with that, I'm going to stop the recording so we have an